Hi guys, happy new year. Hopefully you all rang it in happy and healthy and uh, didn't overindulge. I behaved myself. Hi guys, happy new year. <laughs> oh crap. Hopefully you all ring it in happy and healthy. That's me. Forgot to turn the vol volume down on the iPad. Okay, now we're set. Let's see if I can get through <laughs> this without messing it up already. <laughs> Renee is sitting here. He has had his um, four hours sleep, I think. Ish. Ish. <laughs> he worked all night last night um, at the gallery and then uh, uh, was home by about 7.30 this morning and then had to get some sleep before, I know. We did the live. We did the live. So he's moderately well rested and he is yeah. reasonably well caffeinated. Mm. I, on the other hand, have been awake since about 4 o'clock this morning because I just could not sleep. And uh, so I am also well caffeinated. I've had far too much tea. <laughs> so if I have to take a, a tinkle break, I'm going to take it. <laughs> but I should be good. I should be good. So um, I thought we would start the new year off with uh, something fun, something that's not difficult to paint, but at the same time offer you a little bit of a challenge, give you something, some fun techniques to do. Um, my membership group is going to be doing backgrounds for the entire month of January. So we've got lots of uh, really cool background ideas for them. They're going to be seeing probably three or four videos uh, throughout the month just on backgrounds. Um, they're going to have a pretty nifty pattern. It's going to have a few design elements. And then instructions for, I, I'm thinking, probably three or four um, really cool backgrounds. And then when we do the class, we're going to have an absolute blast because I'm going to scare the living pants off them with uh, some fun backgrounds that are not in the pattern. So they're going to have a lot of fun with that. I'm going to show them how to take one design element or two design elements and just have a blast with it. You can do so many cool things with a really great background. So, and having all of that in the back of my mind, uh, it got me thinking about backgrounds and doing the lives. And I thought it would be fun to do something a little kicked up, something with a few extra steps and, uh, and just have some fun with it. So today we're going to be doing a piece called There Would Be No Butterflies. And the quote that is on the piece is, uh, if nothing ever changed, there would be no butterflies. So that's what we're working on today. And then I thought it would be fun to do something a little bit more realistic uh, with the butterflies, you know, not my usual stamp stencil and, and polka dotted wings and whatnot. So I thought a monarch butterfly would be fun. So I actually incorporated two monarchs in this piece, one male and one female. You can tell the difference. I can. I also know that most of the butterflies that we see here that we mistake uh, that we call monarchs aren't actually monarchs. They're called viceroys. Uh, there is a difference in them. Although they look, they have the same coloring and a similar pattern, mm. there is a significant difference in them. Uh, but we mistake them for monarchs when they're not actually monarchs. They're viceroys. But I did learn in the course of my <laughs> my studies to come up with a really good uh, line drawing for a butterfly that uh, you can tell the difference between a male and a female. And I know what it is. Well, <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> not on a butterfly, anyway. Oh, no, okay. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Certain things we don't need to see at this hour of the day. Okay, I'm running on four here. I, it shows. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> so, um, we're going to have a little bit it's of fun. Honest question. It is an honest question. Um, yeah, so I, in the course of finding a really good little bit of reference material um, for this butterfly, because I kind of wanted it to be a little more realistic, not fully realistic, but a little more realistic. And then um, in the course of that, um, I have to come across a notation that said something about male and female butterflies, how to tell the difference. And I went, how do you tell the difference? Not that this is a common thought that goes through my mind, but it did in this instance. And so um, I learned how to tell the difference between a male and a female monarch butterfly. So I've incorporated both into this. I thought it'd be fun just for the sake of interest. And then um, just threw in a whole bunch of fun little techniques just, just so we can play. So uh, that 
is going to be our project for today. There would be no butterflies, and we're going to play with some fluid acrylics. If you've downloaded the pattern, there is a list in there of colors that you can use instead of the fluid acrylics. I know that they're not easy to find. A um, little easier now that they're back in full production, but um, I know that uh, Maureen Baker at MaureenBaker.com uh, has the fluid acrylics in stock. Um, Sandy McTeer has some in stock, and um, you can get them at uh, Dick Blick. Uh, dot com I know that and uh, and of course you can get them from the decor website as well at decor.com so if you uh, are looking for some I keep a short list of the colors that I use the most often and that's what I've used for this piece these are the colors that I use all the time so they're going to be easy for you to uh, to get and not you know it's not going to cost you the earth to get four or five colors so um, I think that's about it so we are about ready to. Sandy with tear doing the thing. <laughs> she, she's doing her thing, right? I am trying to get your palette view camera running. Oh, okay. You can. Yeah. You want me to just keep on going? Yeah, you got Is the, the overhead gab, working? So. <laughs> I have the gift of gab. Yes, I do. Um, I don't know. I, I know in the U.S., the COVID numbers are really. Um, way up there and they are for us too uh, they have skyrocketed north of the border as well so um hopefully everybody please stay safe i mean i i don't leave the house if i don't have to <laughs> i and i have a you know a purse full of um hand sanitizer and i never go anywhere without a mask um and i've been vaccinated with the hoopla so um and i'm going for a booster next week so uh I'm just, I don't want to get sick, and too many people are getting sick, so um, just stay safe, that's all. I, I, I don't have so many friends that I can afford to lose any, so please stay safe. Um, what else? We had a pretty quiet New Year's. We watched a couple of movies, and I had, a, you know, a little bit of wine, not a lot, but a couple of classes, and that was about it. We live in fields of milkweed and go out. To find monarch eggs and caterpillars all summer, raise butterflies. My husband says I'm obsessed. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, it's not a, we, although we get them here, usually the ones we see are viceroys, not monarchs. So, um, I think I'm ready to get started if I have a, do I have a palette view yet? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> there was something popped up on the screen there a little while ago. Um, I tried to keep the supply list for this pretty short. Um, there's a lot of colors. Well, not a lot of colors. I made a lot of colors uh, using the fluid acrylics, and then I used two stencils. I used the uh, the M two thirty five, which is that half inch Harlequin, and the M two twenty nine, which is that postal stencil. Um, and if you're in the U.S., um, if you're, you know, in Sandy McTeer's neck of the woods and you want to get them really quick, um, Sandy also stocks the M Square because her and I work on this um, product line together. So um, don't forget that if you're in the southern part of the U.S. Um, and you want to get your stencils real quick, go over to Sandy McTeer's website. She stocks them all, too. So uh, take advantage of that. Uh, the other thing that I used in this was this Tim Holtz. Uh, collage paper. I'm rather obsessed with this stuff. I have several <laughs> tubes, several meaning a dozen or so. Um, but this is the one that I used. It's called Entomology. And once you open up the tube, you'll see why, because it's covered in insects. It's This is just one of my favorites. Yeah, right there. Yeah, it is. I don't know. You can show them what it looks like. Yeah. So, Ooh. yeah, I love this stuff. And it's really nice to work with. Um, so, and both Sandy and I stock this. I have this on the website and I think Sandy, Sandy has it on hers too. So there's that. We're going to use a little bit of gesso. We're going to use some matte medium and some fluid acrylics. And we're just going to have some fun with this today. So if you are ready to get started. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I am. Now. Now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Switching camera <laughs> to...
Boom, firework, yay. Oh my goodness. There you go. There I am. So this is the piece we're going to do. I love this. I love all the colors in it. It's fun. It's just enjoyable and whoa, really bright oranges. Is it oversaturated? I think it's a little oversaturated. <laughs> just a little bit. Okay. He's going to adjust the color a little, I hope. I, I hope so too. <laughs> so this is the piece that uh, we're going to do. I love this. I just, I daisies and butterflies how could you go wrong right so we have some simple lightly worked daisies I didn't want these to be the focus of this piece I wanted all of the focus to go on the butterflies and so these are a bit more subdued I sort of let them flow back into the background and then I put all of the major portion of the color on these butterflies I just wanted these to be the focal point so that is what we're going to work on How's that? That's better. So um, I know I was talking about the difference between a male and a female butterfly, and the difference is right here on these two little strokes right here on the wings. On the female, they're, they're fairly plain. On the male, there's two little dots right here. And that's how you tell the difference between a male and a female monarch. Didn't know that till I went through all of this. And the Viceroy looks very simple, except it's got a black stripe that runs right across the lower part of the wing. And that's the difference between a Monarch and a Viceroy. Other than those two things, they're very difficult to tell them apart. So uh, the steps for this are super simple. This is not a difficult piece to do. You can bring it closer to and we're going to I'm going to move that out of the way. We're going to start by putting our paper down. And for that, we need our brayer. And we need a little bit of matte medium. I love my matte medium. It's one of my favorite things. And then I need a fugly brush. Look, I've got a brand new one. I'm going to get this wet. <laughs> of course you have a brand new one. <laughs> it's a brand new you fugly brush. You took it from inventory. I did. <laughs> Before they were all gone. Okay, so here is my fugly brush. This is a fugly brush. <laughs> now you understand why I call it a fugly brush. Where is your... This is my really fugly brush. So these things take a beating. I, I love this brush and I love it for a reason. But this is a brand new one. It's a dynasty encaustic. I use either the three quarter, the one inch, or the half inch, depending on the size of the surface that I'm working on. This is, I love this one for texturing because it's it's gotten very stiff because the bristles have worn down. I love that. And this one is quite soft, definitely fugly because these things get a lot of use. So I'm gonna use this one, this medium fugly. It's medium fugly. It's not uh, completely fugly. What size is the surface? The surface is a six by 12. I'm just using an art panel. You can use canvas. You could use um, anything you really wanted to. I mean, if you wanted to do this on, on uh, watercolor paper or whatever you have, just something approximately that size will work. Poster board if you're really Poster watching. board if you're really hard pressed or media board. So I'm putting, a generous coat, not a heavy coat, but a generous coat of matte medium over the whole surface. And I'm going to brush it out nice and even. I don't want this, you know, gobs of it everywhere, but I do want enough of it that it's going to take this paper nicely. Now, this is where you get to decide how much of all of this detail you want in your piece. And fortunately for me, this uh, paper is roughly six inches wide. So I'm going to try and get it in there straight. That would help. Yeah, a little wrinkle. A little wrinkle here and there. It's not going to be the end of the world. But the nice part is that matte medium is a little forgiving. And I'm making this look much harder than it actually is. <laughs> 
There we go. Ooh, where do you, where can we get the collage papers? I have some on the website. We have some in inventory. Uh, I know that I think I shouldn't say I know, but I think Sandy McTeer has some on her website as well. All the links are in the description. So. Yep. And then you're going to use one of those small brayers. I love this thing. And you're just going to man, it's noisy. It's squeaking. <laughs> it's squeaking. So I just used that little brayer to make sure that the paper is firmly seated. You're supposed to clean the brayer. Shush. <laughs> it's screaming out for help. It's been well used <laughs> and well loved. So. That just makes sure that it's firmly seated in that mat medium. Now, if you have a beauty supply place or a Walmart or a Dick Blick or um, a home improvement center near you, grab yourself one of these. This is just a sanding board. This one actually I got at the beauty supply place near us. Um, it's a nail file, a medium to coarse one. And I'm going to use this to trim the paper off. So I just sand down and away. I don't go back and forth because if I do that, it'll peel the paper off. But I just go down and away. And then that lets you take that paper off easily. I do not throw this out. Hang on to this because you can use this for other things. And then you just clean your edges, same way, down and away. I love collage paper, especially these Tim Holtz ones. I just, they're so pretty and they're always so interesting. Tim creates some really cool stuff. <laughs> what a surprise, I was thinking you would be taking a day off. <laughs> I did take a day off. Christmas day. I took, well, I took more than a day. You took about a week. I took about a week. I played with my pencils. Played with your pencils. You made cookies. I made cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I did some cooking. Watched a lot of movies. Just enjoyed it. We played cards, laughed like idiots, and had a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah. Cards Against Humanity. Wait. Cards Against Humanity was great. That was a hilarious game. Not for the faint of heart. No. If you're, <laughs> if you're easily offended, it's not a game for you. <laughs> so our next step for this, I, what I love about this collage paper is that it's super thin and it dries very, very quickly. Uh, this might still be a bit too wet, but easily fixed. I'm just going to take my heat gun to this just so that I don't have any... Uh, you know, bubbles of, of matte medium sticking out. I love this one. It's just got lots of interesting stuff in it. Cicadas, and I think that's one of those kissing bugs. Yes, <laughs> most important part I heard was cookies. <laughs> well, apparently my son feels the same way, Jessica. <laughs> the most important part is cookies. So... Our next step for this is to, um, we're going to hide some of this. And then we're also at the same time going to create a little bit of texture. Um, as much as I love this, I kind of like the idea of breaking it up a little bit. So I, um, I'm just going to use a little bit of gesso. Don't need a ton of it on here. There's probably enough on there to do this whole board. And I'll probably end up scraping some back into the dish. So we're just going to put on a few little patches like this. Um, I kind of like the idea of burying some of the bugs, or at least pieces of it. They're enjoying your blue jay. Oh, my blue jay. I'm quite pleased with him. Yeah. So and you'll notice I'm just lightly dragging some of that gesso across. It is a very thin application. If you look, you can see this stuff right through it. Excuse me, postage machine? <laughs> Just turn on randomly? It updated. Oh, there you go. 
Uh -huh. So I'm just using a very light application of this over top of this paper. I don't care if I bury some of this. I'm keeping some of it because I like the interest that it creates, but um, I don't want to bury it completely. So I kind of like those little thin layers, those thin patches. It kind of breaks this up a little. And the one thing that I didn't do with the first one, with the original, that I am going to do with this one, is I'm going to subdue this a little bit more. Um, like anything else, once you get the, the color and everything on, I kind of went, hmm, you know what would have been better? <laughs> but in this particular case, um, I have the opportunity to do this. And we can decide once it's done. So I'm going to dry this real quick. I love this gesso. It doesn't crack. It doesn't do weird stuff when you hit it with this, uh, this dryer. It's pretty neat. And because it's such a thin application, it dries really quick. So that is how you develop that background. This is going to give us a ton of texture. Of course, it's not dry yet. Maybe you get your paint palette. This, I, you know what? Michael's has all sorts of them. They're just a, this is just paper palette. And this one, I believe, is a Strathmore. Yep. Strathmore paper palette. Um, Art Minds, actually, the Michael's brand is a pretty good palette. I have no complaints. Gesso, not texture, maybe? I'm, I'm using gesso because it's super thin and it's nicely opaque. And we're going to sand it. Nothing says it can't use texture medium. You could use a texture medium, although, um, quite honestly, it's not going to dry white. Most of them don't. They just dry kind of funky, so I went with this. Now, my base color under this, I used some light buttermilk, but you can use white. Did we? Yep, we got it. I fixed. I fixed. You fixed. I fixed. <laughs> okay, I fixed. it's all fixed. I saw it stop. Okay. So we're going to, um, as I said, in the first one when I. There. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it playing on the keyboard? Or <laughs> no. Was it Bob? Um, in the first one, um, the only thing about this that I didn't like was I found that the design elements that were showing through from the paper were very stark, very dark. Uh, so I wanted to soften that. So this is how I'm going to... Oh, no, it's worse than that. What? We just lost video. Well, it seems to be showing up here. Yeah, unless your hand is... Stuck in a frozen position. Oh, okay. So we've got sound, but the video is stopped <laughs> moving. Yep. Crap. That's the first. Hang on, guys. We're going to try and sort this out. <sighs> yeah, we are hooped. 
both cameras are frozen. Oops, guys, both our cameras have frozen for some unknown reason. We're not sure why. Time to sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> What happened here? Okay, don't. So, Facebook is going to lose it completely. It'll start up again. YouTube, I'm pretty sure, will start right back up. Okay. So, hang tight, guys. We'll be right back.